Hi, I'm Michael Brower. Welcome to my room at Electric Lady Studios. Today I'm going to show you the Brower Motion plugin. It's a plugin I'm very proud of, having developed it with Waves. It's a spatial type plugin. It's got panning, uh, and if you put it into a static position, depending where you put it on, you can have some incredible effects going on. So let's run a through a few different sounds, and I'll show you what it can do. The first one comes with a default. And so we're going to listen to what that is, and I'll, I'll play you Panner 1 and Panner 2 so you can hear the difference in what happens when you blend the two. So this is the default as is. That's with the plugin. Let's hear it bypass. And then with it in. So now let's hear what it sounds like just panner one alone. And let's listen to panner two. And together. Let's change the depth a little bit. We go to Panner 2 and see what that sounds like. Let's try it again by changing the width. Maybe let's speed it up a little. Let's see what happens if we dirty it up. So we go to Dynamics, select Panner 2, and see what happens. Or maybe let's just put a direct signal in there and, and affect that. This is with it off. And now we dirty it up. I select direct. And let's move over just to free. I'll get rid of some of that direct. You know, on a sound like that, it's just, it's just endless amount of options that you can have. So the first thing I'm going to do is just run you through the basics of what it does. You have two panners, panner one, panner two. Uh, you can link them so that whatever you do to panner one, you do in panner two. And how you're going to have this panning dictated is by either the sync, which is from the tempo, Free, which 
means you just got it going on its own or input, which is really cool because you can really get interesting patterns by just how much level you're putting into it and it'll react to the transients or the manual, which is basically a static position. The path type, you've got four. Basically, you've got your classic, which just goes from left to right. Your circle, which just goes around in a circle here. Circle phase, which is kind of same thing, but it's just a little phasey. And the X lights. The X lights is just going between A and B. And you can control how open that sound is going to be or how very static. I mean, uh, very pointed. You can also control the length by you've got a choice of bars and beats. You can do a triplet, you can do a dotted, which is great to change the pattern, especially when you've got a tempo going. And you can also control the classic by different patterns, sine wave and so on and so forth, right? You've got like four different types. For the classic, you have a choice of all four, but if you go to set, set, say, X lights, you just have the one that exists. That's it. You don't have another choice. On With a circle, you have these four too. So they're always going to be really changing how that circling around. You can reverse it from pan or two. You can also decide the offset where it's going to start. You've got your pre-delay, mod delay, and your depth. Your depth is really cool. Let's say you go into circle. And so that circle can be really wide or very narrow. So therefore, it won't feel like it's super wide around your head. You can just have it kind of circling almost to the point where it feels like it's panning, but it's panning towards you a little bit. And then your width, how wide do you want that pan? It could just be circling in the middle or you can move it. So you have all these little choices that you can do. You can actually go beyond the stereo image. So you've got this width that's incredible. Then you've got triggers. Is it a one shot, which is just one time around or a re-trigger, uh, the simple, you'll see that the, you know, you just play with the one that you think works best for you. Then the sensitivity, so you can control what that sound is because maybe there's too much bottom in and, and by just putting the high pass through it, you can just really filter down to just a particular sound is gonna help trigger that. And the sensitivity is how sensitive is it gonna be to the input signal. Then you've got a section here that's really cool. It's called dynamics. Essentially, I wanted to be able to affect the sound. Uh, I wanted to get some, maybe some distortion on it. And its distortion is based on this old Akai sampler that I had years ago. And I told Mike Frattis, a designer, why don't we incorporate some of that so we can actually not have it as clean as the input signal might be. We want to affect it. But we want to be able to have a choice. So you can affect that either pan or one or the direct. Now the direct comes in by you going to the left as your mix bus basically here. If you wanted to just to control the, the drive on the direct, or maybe you just want to control the, this drive and distortion over the whole output. So you have all these choices. And the amount of drive and the amount of ratio is really, really cool. So you'll hear, you'll definitely hear the difference. And then you've got your high pass and low pass. Then down here, you've got motion, filter. Uh, what's really cool is gain far. So let's say you're in a circle and you've got really wide and back here, you're losing a bit of the signal, a bit of the, the sound. And you just gain up the far and then you'll, you'll get louder is really great. And then you got the gain close. And then over here, you've got the general input and you got control over panner one, panner two, and the general output, and then your mix. Um, you can stop any one of them at any point you want. And if you just want to hear panner one, you can just mute panner two. And then you could also control it from a side chain, external side chain. You got your BPMs that you can also put in if you want. Then if you just want to see, 
it's a visual thing. If you just want to see panner one, you just click off panner two. Um, you know, so let's see if I do this, take off direct. I just want to see panner one and that's it. That's what I've got right here. So that in a real nutshell and really quick are the options on the Brower plugin. Very simple, very logical. You can just start having fun with it as soon as you get some music in it. All right, let's do one of my favorite, which is X lights. X lights came about when I was actually stopped at a train stop at a cross lights. I'm just sitting there and I'm watching the red lights flashing back and forth. And it was interesting how they, they didn't actually were on and off. They faded in and out. And I'm thinking, wow, that's really cool. <laughs> What would happen if it was at, that was actually a sound in the stereo and I was just hearing the stereo coming in and out, but not panning left and right, just going in, out, in, out. And that's how the idea started. And when we got the, you know, your typical, the classic, the circular and the, and the classic left and right is when I brought this up to Fratis and his team. I was like, you know, this is the kind of thing I want to do. And imagine the cross lights. And, you know, they went, uh, okay, we'll try that. And uh, sure enough, they came up with something that's incredible. I'm going to mute Panner 2, so we just hear the X lights on Panner 1. I'm going to set it at quarter beats, and it's going to be in sync. And then what you're going to hear is about do very, you know, part of the sound. And then as you control the pulse width, you'll get more and more of the sound. And I'll start off with in bypass so you can hear what it's like originally, and then what we did when we added the signal. Now let's get more of the music in there. So I'm gonna start changing the pulse width clockwise. That's the X light. Maybe let's add to the panner two. Let's um, unmute it. Maybe we'll do, let's play around. Let's do a circle. Now that right now I've got it at 132nd. So let's, let's slow it down a bit. Now, the reason why you couldn't see this is because I had deselected it. So let's open it up and there you are. There's the circle. Let's slow it way down. So there's a good example of doing X lights and adding some circle to it, which depending on the sound, I mean, some work better than others. So let's try another one. This one is called the Half Beat Classic. So let's see what's going on. On panner one, I've got the classic. On panner two, I've got the circle. I got a bar in sync and I got a half a beat. And so let's start with playing it in bypass. <laughs> I'll put it in. And so you see here, what I'm doing is I want to get some drive on the direct signal. And so I've got a little drive, and then as I bring it back, so let's see what happens if we want even more. And 
And that's the direct sound. Well, let's try it just on the panner. And let's not do it on panner one. Let's do it on panner two, which is circling around. See what happens there. Oh, it looks like I already had some going. So let's see what happens if it sounded with it off. Now let's see, it goes away a little bit at the end. So let's turn it on. Let's see what happens if we gain up the far end. Another one of your effects here. So let's try another example. Uh, I'm going to combine X lights on panner one and circle on panner two. Some of these stems already have a little bit of panning going on, but you'll see what the, happens when I enhance all of that. This one is just pretty much static. I mean, there might be some reverbs moving around. So we'll start with it in bypass. That's bypass. So now let's see what happens when we put it in. With panner one and X lights, it's at like at a half beat. Panner two is the circle doing a bar. And I've got the panner two reverse. And what else do we have on the panner? We've got panner two, he's got some drive. I got a little direct on there. The drive is going on across panner two. What do we have on panner one? Panner one, I've got a little drive going on the direct. So let's put those things together and see what we got. You know, and then you can play around with it. You want to speed it up, see what goes on. You can do anything you want. And of course, in any of these situations, you, everything is automatable. Here's one that's really cool. It's a nice atmospheric type of pad. And we'll start in bypass. And now let's do it again with the Brower motion in. So to create that slow movement on panner two, which is the circular, instead of going for beats and so I've just got a slow speed to it. It's in free form and it's reversed from panner A. And I've got a little direct in there, which I've got the drive on, which sounds cool. And on panner one is in sync. Panner one is, the, is your classic left and right panning. And on that one, I've got it a one bar sync. And you can play around with the different waveforms, which will completely change. You have so many options of the, the sound will change a lot. So let's listen to that with all this in.
This is listening to it with Panner 2 Circle muted. And this is what's going on with just the Panner 2 in and Panner 1 muted. So here's another one that's a lot of fun. This one I call Loop de Loop. And I'll play it to you in bypass, see what it's like originally. I mean, there's already some movement going on. Um, that was the, the way I got the loop. But I just wanted to have a little bit more fun with it. So let's look at what I've done to this one. Panner one is in sync and it's a one eighth beat. I've got some drive on the panner and I've moved in the width. So it's really, instead of being here, it's kind of left center, right center. And the starting point is as far to the left as possible. So when it stops, it's, the trigger is always gonna start from the left. The right side is being triggered by the input, which is really cool because it, and how sensitive you get the, the input is going to affect what kind of rhythm you're creating. And on this one, instead of doing it, it's in a circle mode, but instead of going all the way around, I'm just having it just working in between the left and the right. So it feels like it's coming at you, but it never goes to the back. It just stays out front. I've got the depth. So the depth, it's really strong, but it doesn't go all the way back. And then the width is right on the edge of the image. And you can even go wider and we'll see what happens if I do that. It's reversed to Panerai. So let's see what that sounds like. So there I'm playing with the dynamics of Panner 1, changing the depth. And again, it's the whole point of this is how musical can you make what you already have? Can you make it more dynamic? Can you make it move better within the confounds of, of the song? And your options are really as limited as your imagination. If you have great imagination, there's a million different ways you can get this. And at the end of the day, it's just a tool to, to make what you have feel better. That's what it's down. It's, it's an extremely musical plug-in and I hope you enjoy it. Mm -hmm. 